What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Jeffton Jones, again. And look, today I want to talk about a topic that I have often had hard feelings for for many years. And that is the topic of my issue of the religion and the doctrine of the Hebrew Israelites. Now, for many years, I've often thought to myself how the name cult is defined, right? And, and, and if you define the word cult, a cult is simply uh, a group or organization that is started from a larger group or organization. And it sounds so vague, right? Because that, you know, it, that's many organizations out there. But if you often notice something about cults, they all have similar characteristics. They all have characteristics where they are, um, for the most part, not willing to take advice from other people. Um, they don't often have a, a teachable spirit. Um, and they are those that just know it all. Religious people. It sounds just like religious people, right? But on the topic of Hebrew Israelites and their doctrine and their religion, it's interesting to me because they use the King James Version Bible um, for all of their information, right? They use very little history when trying to defend their points. They actually use a lot of Bible, which is amazing. I, 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 wow, KJV version Bible, let's go for it. I'm with you. But the moment Hebrew Israelites and other people that try to use context of scripture out of context, it becomes a problem. And this is where I believe we should address these things. Now, my first issue with the Hebrew Israelites are they take commandments to a, they take the law to a whole nother level. First and foremost, they believe that if you don't take the law verbatim and adhere to it, even in the now, even after Jesus died on the cross, even after he fulfilled the law through him, if you don't adhere to all of the law, you are in sin. That's my first issue with them. And I, let me read some scriptures here that will completely debunk that entire doctrine because there are a lot of people that have fallen by the wayside to these individuals. And I think for me, it's hurtful um, because I, I, I realize that this is a scam. This is a, you know, a, a religion that has deceived many people um, and they're growing tremendously. Um, but it's not originated in a doctrine of love. It's originated in a doctrine of debate. Let's pull up some scriptures here. The scripture that came to me first, and you get to saying, well, Jefton, you know, let's see some scripture here. Now, this is one of many accounts through the Gospels where we see Jesus directly being confronted by the religious people and how he responds to them. So religious people keep the laws. They don't break the laws. Jesus came so that he could fulfill the laws, and now he's being confronted by the religious people, by their law, the very law that he created to begin with. It says, then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? And he answered and said unto them, well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites as it is written, these people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the traditions of men as washing of pots and of cups and many other things do the like. Saints. We're, we're, the scripture refers to this as the traditions of the elders, but keep in mind, this was a, 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 a commandment. This for any of the holy priest, uh, this was what they had to do before they could get into the holies of holies. 
Now, if you're watching this video and you're unfamiliar with the Holies of Holies, I'm keeping it advanced today because many viewers that are going to watch this video are already going to be uh, already going to know what I'm talking about. And so I'm going to make this video super advanced. So if you're just watching, look, there are plenty of other videos. And if you need me to share in the comments, if you want me to share another video where it could speak to more basic terms. But today in more advanced language, let's let's speak to scriptures and let's speak to this false doctrine and, 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 and why I look at it as a false doctrine. Now, it says, now, now getting back to how they had to wash their hands, they washed their hands and they let the water run from it so much so to the point where it did not touch their it, the water flowed off of their wrists so that the dirt would not touch them again. And they made sure that the water was running off of their hands and that it didn't touch their entire body. So if a drip got on their toes, they rewashed. If a drip got back on their hands, they rewashed. They were washing the dirt off before they entered into the holies of holies so that they could lift up God. Many of us know these things, but here's the kicker. That wasn't the only thing they had to do. They had to do many other things before they got into their holies of holies. They had to take their shoes. They had to be dressed in a certain appearance. They had to take their shoes off. They had to uh, 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 um, take certain things uh, uh, away, burn incense. They had to, you know, there's before you could even get into the holies of holies, there were many things that had to be done. You had to be purified yourself. You couldn't just walk into the holies of holies. So I'm saying all these things because this is how the Old Testament represents the law in the washing of your hands and making sure that you are able to get into the holies of holies. And so they confronted Jesus and Jesus says, once again, let's just reread this. He says, why are you laying aside the commandment of God and holding on the traditions of men and many other like things do you do? They're speaking to Jesus, the very person who instilled, who inspired these very traditions. They're telling Jesus to his face that he is not the Messiah and that he, he couldn't be the Messiah because if he was, why is he going back on his laws? Great point. Glad you asked. Very logical, rational way of thinking. He instilled these laws. If he was the Messiah of these laws, as he says he was, why is he not practicing these laws? They confronted him. Great point. Now, as Christians who have not just the Old Testament, but also the New Testament and understands what Jesus did on the cross, we can find out that the best interpreter of scripture are other scriptures. So this is one account where Jesus has told these religious people who are trying to keep the law that they are uh, denying him and rejecting the true commandments. And then verse nine says, for well, ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own traditions. The, the, the Hebrew Israelites, these other false doctrines out here that, that say you must keep the entire law, it's not scriptural. It's not right because the scripture says if you're going to keep some of this, if you're going to adhere to one of these laws, you got to adhere to all of them. And I have watched too many YouTube videos of Hebrew Israelites saying, oh, well, um, we, 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 we keep the Passover and um, we, 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 we observe the Sabbath. But uh, when it comes to the sacrificing of this animal and the, and the burnt offering of this, we don't have to do that to you don't get to pick and choose what scriptures you use for your own benefit. You don't get to pick and choose. If you're going to do one of these things, you have to. That's what Jesus said. He says, look, fine. You want to try to do all these things? Great. I instilled it from the beginning. I thought they were good for you because of your sins. I instilled it. I made these things commandments through your uh, uh, prophet Moses. And so good. If you want to keep these things, do it, but keep all of it. And they cannot come to the table and say that they are keeping all of these things because you cannot keep these laws in today's society. You can't go out and kill an animal. You can't go out and commit burnt offerings anymore like we once used to. It's inhumane in today's society. That's my first issue with them is that they commit so much to the law but don't keep all of it. 
my and, and that was just one scripture. So before I end this point, let's let's jump to another scripture here. The Bible says. If we jump down, it says, and think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill through me. So what is Jesus saying? He's saying, look, I, I, I made the law, so I can't regret in having created it because I inspired it. I, 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 I made it. And so guess what I'm going to do for you, though? I am going to fulfill it through me. I'm going to fulfill it through me so that you now can, can just go back to one commandment, and that is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. This hangs all of the law. That's what the Bible says. If you love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, this hangs all the law. So he says, we're doing away with all the mosaic. We're doing away with all the Levitical laws. And it's going to be by my blood and what I did on the cross that if you have my spirit, you will be able to keep my commandments. But they want to adhere to the law so much. They, they want to adhere to it so much. My second issue with them is they believe that white people are the devil. Yes, if you're still watching this video, they believe white people are the devil. They believe that, which is so interesting to me because all of these white European Caucasian people that they uh, speak so down on um, were the very people that in, uh, uh, helped keep the, the sanctity and help keep the originality of the very words that they're reading. King James was a white man. They would never admit that, <laughs> right? The early translators of our Bibles were of European descent. The early translators of the, of the English worded Bible, they were of European descent. So how can the devil, how can a white man be the devil and yet you read from this devil's book? It's so con it's it's so contra contradict it, it's so it, it's such a contradiction to even fathom their doctrines at times. That's why I thought that we must expose these things and talk about them, right? We must talk about these things. So the white man cannot be the devil because then we also know in what Galatians tells us that there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither male nor female. There is neither bond nor free, but ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Jesus says, go ye out into all nations. How can you go into all nations and preach the gospel and yet look at your brother in Christ as a devil? These are false doctrines that we're talking about, saints. And you say, well, Pat, Jeffton, why are you talking about them? That's so brunt. That's so brash. That's so, uh, 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 and these things must come to light. There are so many people, including family of mine, that have been deceived by such atrocities and such false doctrines that these things must be brought to light. They must be brought to light. And it's discouraging to me because I get to thinking to myself how um, so many people have fallen by the wayside to these ill-willed people, how so many people have simply um, taken on this, this religious uh, behavior in such a um, demonstrative religious behavior as well. If you ever met any of these people, you can't get any words through to them. They don't have a, a inkling of a teachable spirit. They don't have anything that they don't, you cannot teach them anything. They cannot learn anything from you because you're the one that's been brainwashed. And thirdly, what I dislike about this false doctrine of the Hebrew Israelites um, is, is um, they, they take on such a militant form of, uh, you know, the way they carry themselves, it's almost like they're a religious gang. 
Um, and, and, and that shows no free. Let, let's just say, let's by happenstance that I'm wrong and the rest of the mighty men and Christian women of God that paved the way for people like me, you know, um, let's just say we were wrong for decades, thousands of years, right? Let's just say we were wrong. How come they don't yield any fruit? Everyone that I have met, they going back and forth with women. They going back and forth with leaving their children. They going back and forth with this ideology of I could be with this woman and that woman and that woman and this woman. They go back and forth with people on the sides of the, you know, it's one thing to be out there preaching the love of Jesus, handing out Bibles, telling people you love them, yielding fruits and letting God be showing every man a liar. But every time you see them on the corner, you see them spewing division. You see them with crowds of people where they're speaking over them and fighting with people who don't know any better a lot of times, right? Because the people that know better know that you can't get a word into them. So they're just going to keep walking. People like me, right? I see these people sometimes at these large gatherings. I, psh, unless they say something specifically to me, I keep it moving because I know that these people are not going to let you get a word in because they don't have a teachable spirit. And if you're going to use the very Christian Bible that we use to try to defend your point, well, you need to come a little bit stronger because all these scriptures, it, this was just one account. All these scriptures have just made it very clear. And let's just read another one. People, people, I, I just got done telling you how the best interpreter of scripture are other scriptures. Well, let, let's read another one. I talked about the Sabbath, and I'm going to end here. At the time that Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck the ears of the corn, Pharisees saw it and said unto him, Behold, why, the, why do your disciples do not that which is lawful upon the Sabbath day? Once again, questioning him about the law. What does Jesus say? Verse five, or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days, the priest in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? What else did Jesus say? But if you, verse seven, if you had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltiness for the son of man is Lord, even of the Sabbath day. Why didn't Jesus, if he wanted us to adhere to the law, just say, okay, you're right. I messed up. I made my disciples eat from the corn because on the, on the day of rest and, and, and I didn't adhere, I didn't observe the Sabbath day. And I, I'm sorry, I should have made my disciples not eat because today was the Sabbath day. And no matter how hungry they were, I should have had them wait. No, he did not say that. He says, the son of man is Lord even over the Sabbath day. Do you notice how in all of Jesus' responses to these uh, 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 religious people, it always points back to him? You say, Jeff, and so what's your response to this? They, 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 you don't need to commit to, well, it points back to him. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. It points to him, everything in this life that we're dealing with, you can find a way out of it. You can find an answer for it, but it points to him. These false doctrines, these false idols that a lot of people are getting wrapped up into in today's society, guess what? Jesus is saying, that's fine that you got into that, but guess what? Come back to me. Start aiming towards me. Start going back towards Jesus. And that is what Jesus wants. All you false prophets. And here's the thing. A lot of people, and I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I get it. I get it. I get it. People get wrapped up into these things because it sounds so good. A lot of these people are from people from hurting people that I, I, I mind you, keep in mind, I've been watching these things for years. You all, I've been watching all these. I, I've, I followed their channels on YouTube. I've been watching a lot of these things for many years. These people, a lot of them come from hurt. Hurt from the church. I need to see you all in the comments talk about this because I know I'm not the only one who's been feeling this way for many years. I see other Christians on YouTube like-minded like me, so I know I'm not the only one. 
But for many years, I've been watching these people and they are hurt from the church. The people I run into at the barbershop, they always speak down on Christianity, Hebrew Israelites. They point me to the scripture. I know y'all want me to jump to Hebrew seven. I know it. I know it. I know y'all are trying to, y'all going to run rings around me in the comment section. But guess what? I'm not going to entertain that. Folks, if you're hurting from what a man did to you or a woman did to you in the church or what they did to your family or how you've seen them behave, guess what? Not all Christians are like that. And you need to get right with Jesus instead of trying to use men and flawed women of God as scapegoats for your ignorance, for your uh, 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 false doctrines that you are entangled with, right? And if you are truly just naive, and in this religion, be out of ignorance, I've just given you the scriptures. You know what the Bible says. You know what the scripture says. If you know better, you'll do better. If you love him, you would keep his commandments. And I think his commandments have become very clear through scripture. You love him and love his people as yourself. Look, I love you all. I want to see your thoughts and comments um, in the comments section. Um, look, if it stepped on toes, I directed it and I, I wanted it to because these things must be shared. These things must be talked about. And I just got tired of seeing many people run from the faith to this man-made doctrine of evil and try to use excuses as to why they're in it. So, let me hear your thoughts in the comments. Let me see your thoughts in the comments. I love you and I'm out.